Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, Need Software, to 323-405-1341. That's 323-405-1341. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Riley. Hold up, hold up, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey Riley, Anthony Riley. Anthony Riley. The man, the myth, the legend just walked up in through the door, ladies. It, his name is Raheem. It's the hell of a dream. He's the king of his castle. Don't give him no motherfucking hassle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My brother, Raheem. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Peace, God. <laughs> Wait, I don't hear you guys. I don't hear you. Okay. You hear me, Rock? What up? What up? What's up, Rock? It's like you you sound like I can hear you, but it sounds like mad far away or some shit. Yeah. I don't hear him. Time we here, man. We taking our time with this one. Hey, everybody that's in the chat right now, make sure you click. The like button of if this is your first time here make sure you uh subscribe to the channel click the notification bell and click all if you're just joining us we are with hip-hop legends whip a whip van silk ruby d and now in the house raheem Woo! from the furious five and the funky four what up Oh, what up? What up? Grace, just getting crazy up in here, man. I can't even lie. I was a little kid listening to all of y'all on tape. <laughs> just, just, just like imagining. That's what I'm saying. Imagining in my mind, it was a lot of imagination you had to do back then, like with them tapes and shit. If you wasn't old enough to like be moving around and be going to fucking jams and shit like that. Like what the fuck y'all was doing? Standing by the speaker with the boom box on record. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, yeah. I couldn't even do that. Like I had to get the tape of the guy that did that. Ah, okay. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right, 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 right. <clears throat> so sometimes my, my our shits, by the time we get it, <clears throat> I have so much hiss on the motherfucker because this nigga taped it from this nigga's cousin and that one. Eighth generation tapes. Exactly, but the shit is still rocking, though. You still can hear what the fuck. And you just hearing, you know what I mean? No. Oh, I, I think we're hearing you Ooh, now. I heard you there. We, yeah, yeah, I heard you there. Right right. What's, What's good, Raheem? What's good, What's good Raheem? We Peace great. You looking great, brother. I'm, I'm just, just trying look. to keep it together, you know what I mean? Yeah, you look good, girl. You look great, girl. Um, we were talking about earlier how, cause, cause when when um when Shy Rock came, actually when we when we was in Brooklyn, when my show was in Brooklyn at the Black Lady Theater, she actually came to the show, and she was she was like, uh, yeah, Raheem was down with us first, and you know what I mean before he went to the uh. Furious Five, and I was like, "Oh, word! I didn't know that." Like, she was like, "Yeah," like, she's like, "A lot of groups wanted uh Raheem," you know what I mean? And I was like, "Word!" I was like, "What made Raheem so like, you know what I mean? Such a such a player like that that everybody wanted." And it was like, "Yo, he just had that." Like, <laughs> she was like, "He just had that shit back then." Like, like I, I don't even know what she wasn't necessarily put a finger on. She was just like, "Yo, he was just." He just had that energy in the parties and all that type of shit. Well, what do you well, think it was, brother? Well, overall, um, you know, without without me sounding uh, like I'm like I'm uh, you know full of myself, uh, I was I was one of the first um, to sing and rap. 
Mm. And you know, so I would I would like remix. I think that's what she said too. Yep, yep. Yeah, I would I would remix uh like Jackson Five songs and uh sing you know Michael's parts and use uh my group's name, you know, KK, Keith Keith, uh Sha Rock and myself, all our names in in the songs or whatever, and breakout's name. And um, so that that was what kind of set me apart from I think. Uh, other MCs at that particular juncture. Mm. You know what I mean? And, That's very and, interesting. And we we and now fast and forward, that. not to cut you off, but now okay. fast forward to where mm-hmm. we're at with someone like Drake. Mm-hmm. And you see how singing and rapping is like have a symbiotic relationship with each other and that this motherfucker is super winning. Like, do you look at that and feel like, damn, I'm kind of the genesis of that type of shit. Yeah. I, I, I kind of do, but but you know, quietly. I don't I don't go around, you know, broadcasting that shit to anybody. You Fuck know, that. People, I'll do it. I'll broadcast it. That was <laughs> one of the first ones, and he was the first one to do that shit, y'all. That's, 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 you, you know, you up. know, intelligent people, um, intelligent people don't make the claim of being the first to do anything when you know full well that there is nothing new under the sun. Wait, wait, wait. So that's that's you on the beatbox? Just step in the party. Actually, yeah, yeah. that is me. The yeah. Yeah. The yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's me. Yeah. Hold up. Why Hold are you what about that? I don't know if I, that. That. I, I, know if I knew who that was <laughs> necessarily what? back then. Like exactly who was doing what? Just in the party, but I can't keep from getting on, on the dance floor. floor. The music sounds so sweet. So Maybe sweet. Maybe want to get up on my seat. He should be tired. Yeah, that was all me right there, bro. Yeah. 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 Yep. Huh. Fuck. Well, see, I could do the backups. I know my shit. Can't <laughs> run, I'll stop, I can tell the winner because I, I get down. You've been waiting on the beats, bro. Thanks. What? <laughs> Yo. That's some classic shit right there. And, and, and hold up. And wait, and you had knowledge yourself, correct, God? You got knowledge yourself? Factual. You, you had knowledge yourself since back then, God? Yep. I was, I was, said, I got in the Nation of Gods and Earths when I was 11. My, my cousin Green Eye Kevin came up to me on the block. On I lived on 1945 Vice Avenue, across from PS6 on Tremont. And my cousin Green Eye Kevin came up to me and was like, "Yo, cuz, study these lessons." He ain't even tell me what it was. He was like, "Next time I see you, you better know this." And he was like, "Yo, you can't eat pork. Tell tell Aunt Glow you can't eat pork." I went upstairs. I told my mom I can't eat pork. She was like, "What? You was born and raised on pork, boy." <laughs> right? But but one of my older brothers who was Muslim, um, who just came home, uh, she my my mom catered to you know his eating habits, and he didn't eat pork, so she wound up stop cooking pork, and so I was good. You know, what I mean, I studied mm. them lessons, and uh, I'm gone. Yeah. I can yep. hear you. My first name uh, as a god in the nation was Amar. Mm. I mean, yep. Mm. And then he said, My name is Raheem. I'm a son of a queen. I'm the king, I'm the king of my castle. Don't give me, Don't no, give me no hassle. <laughs> like that was God body talk early, like that y'all don't even understand. Yo, and I, I I quoted you as one of the early gods of hip hop in my in my book. Um, when I did my solo album, the Five Percent album, I read that. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Peace, guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So so tell us about the times how you remember it. And listen, like, I mean, just for the record, just so y'all know. We love our power rule brothers. We love our Puerto Rican brothers. You know what I mean? And we're not trying to say that brothers wasn't here and all of that. Um, But we do need to keep it funky. We do need to keep it a foul wow. You know what I mean? 
right. as to as to where this it, you know really the, comes from and, and its roots. Allow me to interject and just say, you know, there are uh, numerous people who are commenting on the inception period of hip hop who weren't there. Yes. Like at all. And yeah. and if the information that they were disseminating to the public were accurate, they get a salute and a high powered handshake from me, but it's not, it's not accurate. And there's a lot of urban legend that's been going around for like 45, 50 years. And you know, like it, it, to me, it needs to stop because this is our history. And if we don't document it right, then it, 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 there's other people already undermining our history and yep. and you know misdocumenting things and saying that things that were not <laughs> factual are factual and they have become factual as a result of years of <laughs> you know uh people co-signing the myths yes. so you know? so let's get it right like right. when you say the myth let's talk let's get into it what what myth are we talking about here in your eyes well well okay so so um there were the majority of of the people who were participants in early hip hop culture obviously were black right and um and you know there were sprinkles of uh latins you know Puerto Ricans mostly. I don't. I don't know any Dominicans who were actively involved in. But they could have been because some of them been, looked like black. But they just wasn't representing Dominican. But they could have been. Factual. Mm -hmm. Factual. Mm -hmm. I, I had two Dominican friends, Cheeky and Herman, that lived across the street, uh, across the hall from me. Um, but but they lived across the hall from me before I got involved in hip hop. And then when I got involved in hip hop, they came to the parties every now and then. But, but they wasn't, wasn't really it fucking. Wasn't they thing, right? It wasn't they thing. They wasn't fucking with it. And mm -hmm. I was listening to earlier, you know, to y'all talking, and there was a time when you know blacks and Puerto Ricans didn't rock with each other like that mm -hmm. to the point where, like, even if even if you were cool with some Puerto Ricans, um, you were cool with them when they wasn't around their people. Cause when they was around they people, you was cocolo. <laughs> exactly, Moreno, cocolo. Exactly. You know, what I mean? um, <laughs> you know um, um, and and you know, even when I would go to like Bronx River Center, uh, I was one of the few dudes from around my neighborhood, Lambert houses, that could go to Bronx River and Lambert. not get robbed because one of my OGs, rest in peace, Spider was one of the Gestapo crew. And so he held me down. So I never got robbed when I went to Bronx River. Mm -hmm. So I went to Bronx River and I seen it all. And um, uh, in Bronx River Center, like as far as B-Boys is concerned, you know, even with the B-Boy culture, um, there, were a, there were sprinkles of, you know, Latino B-Boys, but few. It was just a few. And when we're talking B boys, we're talking like break dancers and popping Correct. and electric mm -hmm. boogaloo and all that. Right. Stuff. They, they uh -huh. do that up from. Because there were, there Shah, were Rock, many more. Shah Rock and I think DXT both described themselves as nomadic B boys and B girls. Right. Yes, because they were nomadic because they they followed the the playlist of whatever whoever the dj was that was playing the breaks because that's what you know that's, that's what compelled that's, that's what compelled them to go to the parties in the first place right you know what i mean so um they they would go to the parties you know uh at first the way that cool hurt played uh his music um first of all cool hurt copla rock clark kent timmy tim nigga twins salute Gods, gods of this. Right. Um, um, they were the prototype, and every DJ, every hip hop DJ that called himself a hip hop DJ followed 
Cool Herc's playlist, right? And uh, the difference, the contrasting difference between the way that Cool Herc played his records and the way that <laughs> Grandmaster Flash or Flowers and Theodore or, well, okay, so Flowers is a different, that's a different conversation. Well, actually, it's the same conversation, but Grandmaster Flowers, rest in peace, uh, legendary, but he was not a hip hop DJ. He was a yes. disco. He was a disco legend, a disco DJ. He opened up for James Brown and you know stuff like that. And so did uh, uh, DJ Hollywood. DJ Hollywood is a disco legend. But what I will say about DJ Hollywood is is that at one point when uh, early the first generation MCs started. Uh, they started rhyming more, more toast like. And yes, y'all, and the sounds that you hear, the deaf to your ear, have no fear, because you know what I mean? It was more toast like. It wasn't syncopated to the rhythm, right? And then after Flash brought Cowboy, Melly Mel, and Kid Creole to 371, and they heard DJ Hollywood rhyme to the beat and do crowd response, then they changed their style. Now, when I was a member of the Funky Four, we were already rhyming like that. <laughs> that's what, that's what yeah. made us the, I guess, the antithesis at the time to the Furious Four. So the Funky Four battled the Furious Four May 11th, 1979 at the Webster Avenue PAL. Mm. Um, Thank you. Let's okay. see. So, so the way that the way that Hurt played his music was, he would sometimes he would play the record from the beginning, right? Yeah. And you would listen to the record until it got to the break, right? And um, it wasn't he didn't he didn't put his hands on the record the way that the cutting or the way that the turntablists DJs who who were birthed by Grandmaster Flash, Grand Wizard Theodore, DXT, and, and the lot, uh, he didn't put his hands on the records like they did. Mm. Um, that was like taboo. So um, I spoke to Clark Kent, uh, Herc's, one of Herc's protégés, and he was telling me that uh, he saw Grandmaster Flash early on before you know, he became notable and he was telling Herc that Herc should put Flash down with him. And that one time when Herc had to step out for a few, he let Flash get on the turntables at one of his parties and Flash cut shit up. He killed it. Mm. Um, so now, now there's people who, who, uh, who have been co-signing this myth um, for for 45, 50 years in that uh, that Theodore made up scratching mm. and that Flash made up the backspin. Okay? Mm. So now, here we go. Okay. So if you're a thinker, right, and you are a scientist, a technician, and you understand the the technical aspects of DJing. I'm an MC, but I understand this. In order to find the cue point of any record as a DJ, you have to rub the record first, right? So now, here we go. Grandmaster Flash lived in the same apartment as Grand Wizard Theodore. He lived with their family. Mm. And um, at some point in time, uh, when they were called the L Brothers, Grand Master Flash was a part of the L Brothers, right? Mm. And um, so Grand Wizard Theodore's older brother, Mean Gene, uh, it was his equipment, basically, Mean Gene and Cordio their other brother. And so um, according to what I was told, 
uh, Mean Gene wouldn't allow Theodore at one point to touch the equipment because Theodore was a little boy. And I mean, Theodore is short, period. You know, he's always been short. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so when he was a little boy, he was really short. And Flash said that Theodore could not reach the turntables. And so Mean Gene wouldn't allow Theodore to touch the turntables because he couldn't even damn reach them, right? Okay, so if he couldn't reach them um, and he wasn't allowed to touch the turntables, you're not the way that he was able to hone his craft to become a DJ was every time his older brother, Mean Gene, left the apartment, uh, Flash, whenever he would finish practicing, first of all, when Flash was practicing, Theodore was there, right? So Flash, his first cue, his first cueing system was not a pair of headphones. It was a pair of house speakers. So he's queuing up records on a house on house speakers and he's playing the part the 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 on the turntable that's supposed to be audible to the audience. Mm -hmm. That's playing out the big speakers. Mm. But, but he's queuing the record on the other turntable is not supposed to be audible to the audience right. on house speakers. So it is audible, right? So he's queuing up the record and he's spinning the record back and obviously having to rub the record because he's finally ready, mm -hmm. right? And Theodore is there the whole time, but Theodore can't reach the turntables, right? And so every time Mean Gene would leave the apartment to go do whatever he did, Flash would put a crate of records in front of the table so Theodore could stand on it and practice honing his craft as an aspiring DJ. Mm. So everything that Theodore learned, he learned from Flash. Oh yeah. That's all. That's all. That I'm not and 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 the the contrasting difference between Grandmaster Flash and Grand Wizard Theodore is this. Grand Master Flash created the backspin and he mistakenly created scratching by queuing up the record and Theodore heard him queuing up the record and took and scratch. Said, I'm gonna make this audible. Gonna... Right, that's what happened. That's how it happened. Mm. Okay. That just sounds cool. I'm gonna actually use that. That's a good. I'm gonna slide the fader over while I'm doing that, exactly. <laughs> and that's gonna be a thing. Exactly. That's how it happened. Mm. But the the myth has been going on for so long because people who weren't there continue to co-sign the myth because there's a contingency of people who are Grandmaster Flash. And the Furious Five detractors, or Grandmaster Flash detractors, whatever. And so, you know, anybody but Grandmaster Flash or Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five can be credited in this eye as long as it's not us. Yeah. Hmm. Worth it. Okay, well, you heard it right here. And, and, and with, with all due respect, Love, admiration, Grand Wizard Theodore, Mean Gene, Cordio, the L Brothers, the Fantastic Five, legendary from day one in my book, always will be, always was. And much respect to y'all. I, I, I have nothing but love for you brothers. Whip a whip. God bless you, man. Word.